Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Ranian from the Center for Strategic and International Studies, and we have with us Candace Worley, who is the Vice President for Enterprise Solutions Marketing at Intel Security, and also Simone Petrella, who is the Chief Cyber Strategy Officer for CyberVista. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, we just uh, got through a, a great panel on uh, cybersecurity uh, here following the report that Jim Lewis and his team put together on hacking the, the skills gap to try to uh, skill shortage uh, in the cyber world. And I wanted to start with you, Candace, talking a little bit about, you know, what, what are, did you get both of your take on the challenges for hiring top talent? You know, where are the shortfalls? Uh, and where is the market driving you in terms of the next set of skills that you're going to need? Yes, I certainly think that the cybersecurity space requires some specific skills. And so, one, we have a bit of a shortage just in terms of the number of computer science, engineering majors coming out of universities, which are kind of a core set of skills to come in and start, you know, developing software, et cetera, for cyber. I think, secondly, you know, in the report, we actually um, indicate that about 50% of, of employers want those um, university degrees as a baseline, but they also find that things like hacking competitions, professional certifications, and real world experience are critical to them making a decision to hire someone. We as an industry participant from a security development perspective see those same challenges. We're looking for people who understand how to write secure code, how to um, track down attacks, do intrusion prevention, those kinds of things. And so we, we also see that same challenge. We're looking to universities to help them fill that pipeline, jointly work with them to develop programs. And so we think that's going to be one of the things that we have to do to, to actually solve this problem as we move forward. Simone? I think one of the biggest challenges that I've seen is that when you look at this report and what came out, the bachelor's or any degree is actually third outside of experience and certifications. Well, the challenge with any of those certifications in the space right now is that they actually, in many cases, do require experience. And a lot of the job positions that are available say, we want you to have this baseline level of knowledge, which you might be able to obtain through a degree program or something else, but we also want you to have the security experience actually doing this hands-on. It becomes very challenging because for new entrants to the field, whether they're coming out of a degree program or just transitioning, have a challenge in gaining that experience until someone gives them that initial opportunity to, to cut their chops on something. It's a, it's a complete catch-22. What are some of the, from a policy standpoint, what are some of the things that the government can do to help? I mean, in the past, we've had uh, tax breaks for folks who, for example, go into engineering. We have subsidized uh, tuition programs. What are some, because obviously this is a core skill set, and top folks in the Pentagon and elsewhere in government have said that, unfortunately, some of the top Americans are not as good as some of the top foreign students, and those foreign students are getting that education sometimes and, and leaving the country. Um, what are some of the policies that folks in Washington have to consider in order to help address this shortage? I mean, certainly I think, you know, working with universities to ensure that they have very strong programs in computer science and engineering that will help fill that pipeline is a big one. I think if there are ways in which, you know, government and industry and education can work together to create programs that incent um, students to go into those, um, that would also be extremely advantageous in terms of kind of pipeline development. I think there's also an opportunity for public and private partnership around more of a vocational schools for training. So as opposed to forcing folks who are interested in the field to go through a four-year degree program, potentially they could pursue a two-year degree program or maybe something that's more very tactically technical skills based and give them those training opportunities that aren't necessarily something that you would require in a higher degree program. And I think that can be achieved by working with employers to identify what are the greatest needs and then identifying the educational programs and training programs that are out there to provide that. Uh, let me ask about how you get young kids into this. I mean, the big challenge is, you know, and everybody says this, if you don't get kids very young, um, they're not going to go into the hard sciences. Um, you know, and that's why the Big Bang Theory and a couple of the other shows have really been good because kids now want to be theoretical physicists or experimental physicists. Uh, you know, and anybody who knows the show is definitely not engineers. Uh, but um, what are, you know, is there changes that have to be made to the curriculum or the way that we approach the sciences to attract from a very early age the folks that we want 
to get into these fields? So I think there's a couple things. One, you know, there's a lot of discussion about diversity and the diversity of teams and how that um, breeds creativity within organizations. So I think one of the things that we need to do is very early, uh, I'd say as, as early as elementary school, we need to be starting to talk to everyone about how they can do whatever they want to do, whether, I don't care, you're, you're, you know, girl, boy, as we joked earlier, Klingon, right? Um, you know, you can become a computer science major. You can go into a cybersecurity field. I, I also think to your point, pop culture is actually doing quite a lot for the cybersecurity field right now. I mean, you know, cyber CSI is a great program to drive interest and make this a real career in the potential minds of kids who might be watching that program. I think before some of the pop culture things we have now, people didn't even realize this was like a specialty field that I could go into. So I think capitalizing on that pop culture and beginning to work with, you know, um, middle school and high school for sure students to understand this is a field, this is what it would take to get into it, here are the kinds of things you can do. I mean, we talked about gaming skills in the in the survey and how companies are seeing that kids who have great gaming school skills are actually developing great cybersecurity skills. So I think there are ways in which we can begin to influence and mold the thinking of kids around this as a potential career. I think a lot of it is also fostering the innate interest and curiosity that children have in how the way our world works. So if you think about the equivalent in kindergarten, maybe a student had, you know, a caterpillar and they watched it turn into a butterfly and that's so fascinating. Well, it's the same thing now with technologies. And so having them have the opportunity to explore and take apart a computer and understand how it works and how does it actually look at a component level and put it back together. I think we need to, as an educational system, tap into humans innate curiosity and kids are so curious about how the world works around them and pop culture is a great way to provide that access traditionally we only knew how to tell people how to go become pre-med so they could go to medical school or pre-law so they could go to law school this is a field that doesn't have a precedent like this uh, and so i think by giving them an opportunity to have these diverse experiences and just explore the worlds around them they will find that this is actually a more interesting field than they might have necessarily considered otherwise well, and speaking culturally, right, if geek is chic and speaking Klingon is not a bad thing anymore, because it's always been a key indicator of cyber skills, frankly, uh, um, you know, is a very positive thing, isn't it, ultimately? Absolutely. It's very positive. Yeah, Mr. Robot is the best thing that happened to the cybersecurity industry. The show is, you know, incredible. It shows a very realistic side, but it does so in a way that shows people how interesting and fascinating the field could be. It's like what Law & Order did for lawyers back in the day. Um, yeah, and everybody who knows that cyber is a lot cooler than being a lawyer. So, uh, um, Simone Petrello of Cyber Vista, thank you very, very much. Candace Worley of Intel Security, thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah.